When do you use rapid tooling versus production tooling for plastic injection molding? And what's the difference anyway? Hello and welcome to Serious Engineering for Serious Engineers. Serious Engineering. I'm your host Gordon Stiles, founder and CEO of Star Rapid, and we're pleased to bring you part two of rapid tooling versus production tooling. If you haven't seen part one already, check it out in the link over here. Today, we'll dive into true production tooling used for making millions of plastic injection molded parts. Full soft steel molds with cold gate or cold runner. This is the type of mold that we employ here at Star Rapid now. From the outside, they are mostly indistinguishable from a fully hardened production mold tool. You have a complete mold base, but usually we cut the cores and cavities directly into the mold plates. These plates are usually made from soft or sometimes toughened P20 steel, or maybe a stainless steel such as NAC80 from Japan, but don't be fooled, NAC80 will rust in the right conditions, but it's great for polishing. A famous alternative to NAC80 in Europe might be Stavax, which is an S136 from Uderholm. That really is a stainless steel and polishes beautifully. Because the tool is a complete mold base, it's a lot easier to have sliders and lifters and hydraulic cores hanging off the tool. We can also make multiple cavities or left and right balanced pair cavities. Normally, these kinds of tools have a cold gate or cold runner system. That means that when the part is ejected, you often see the part coming out with the molding gate or runner still attached. You can also use a sub gate insert to auto trim the part in the mold during ejection. P20 molds can last anywhere from 10,000 cycles or even less with an aggressive material like PVC or a heavily glass filled material, all the way up to maybe 200,000 cycles with NAC80 and a sympathetic material. I've seen millions of shots into soft tool materials, even aluminium molds, if the geometry is really simple, like a dinner plate shape, and with very easy to mold materials like polypropylene. Here's a pro tip for you. One thing you can do to improve a soft mold is to add a hot sprue nozzle to your mold. This eliminates the waste in a cold gate. Single or dual cavity hard molds with a hot sprue nozzle. Then we move up to hardened tool steels. Generally speaking, tool makers do not harden the entire mold unless it's very small. We typically use a soft set of bolsters and into those bolsters we set fully hardened core and cavity inserts, often made from hardened H13, pre-hardened P20, NAC80, S136 or 420. There's just so many material options, each has its own application, so be sure to ask your tool maker which materials they recommend. Once we're using hardened tool steel, we almost always add a hot sprue nozzle or a simple hot runner to avoid waste. A single cavity hardened mold is typically good for one million or more cycles. Multiple cavity hard molds with hot runner. Finally, we reach full production level tooling, which will have soft or toughened bolsters with many fully hardened core cavity sets. To run the melt all the way to each cavity, we will add a hot runner system to the back of the mold with a whole series of hot drops typically one for every cavity. A hot runner system is quite a sophisticated machine in its own right and can often cost tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars and all hot runners will come with a PLC controller. You can even control the opening time of each individual valve gate to help with the filling of very large cavities with multiple drops, for example. This is called sequential gating. Probably the most famous hot runner brand is the Canadian company called Husky. Again, details in the description below. You would still expect 1 million plus cycles, but because you have many cavities, you can multiply that number of cycles by the number of cavities to get the total expected life capacity of the mold. If you have a 16 cavity tool, you should get at least 16 million parts. Here's another video I took at the 2018 Fukuma show in Germany. It's a 72 cavity bottle cap mold running with a two second cycle time. That means that you get 72 caps for each cycle, or 36 caps per second. That's insane volumes. I felt sorry for the operator that had to QC all those parts. <laughs> Only joking, of course. They were using a high-speed camera inspection system similar to the one here.
If you use really high quality steels, fully hardened and even add a coating of some kind, maybe a PVD, physical vapor deposition, ceramic coating, you can get millions and millions of cycles out of this kind of tool. So in summary, you have a whole range of technologies that can take you from just a few hundred parts all the way through to hundreds of millions of parts. The best thing to do, as always, is to consult with your toolmaker or molder as early as possible in your product development cycle. So hopefully you've enjoyed this pressing subject and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we'll see you next time for another shot of Serious Engineering for Serious Engineers. Serious Engineering Oh, <laughs>